Welcome back to Vision Miner 3D Printing News. Today we've got a Formnext 2020 recap special just happened and we've got machines, software, and materials all coming out of this new show. It was the world's biggest show every year hosted in Germany, but this year it was online. So we didn't get to run around the trade show floor, but instead we've got the best things right here for you now. So let's get right into it. So first up, we've got machines. Starting out with the Ultimaker 2 Plus Connect. Basically, this builds on the 2016 model, uh, and this latest version adds Wi-Fi and Ethernet connectivity specifically to use their digital factory software. Now, this is designed for general access printing labs like libraries and universities and different places like that where users can go in and check out a printer and basically enable access to it. Next, they also added, finally, the touchscreen interface uh, to replace the old dial and button controls, which frankly are quite outdated. Uh, and they also unveiled their Ultimaker 2 Plus Connect Air Manager uh, for added fume extraction capability, which is basically a HEPA filter. Now, if you really want fume extraction, you should probably check out the BOFA systems we have at visionminer.com with full carbon HEPA filtration. Uh, but regardless, the new model is $24.99 for the 2 Plus and $450 for the Air Manager. This is basically a $2,500 single extruder printer for PLA and PETG and some other filaments uh, and a $450 HEPA filter. But uh, we do love them, don't get me wrong. Our 2016 model we still call Old Faithful. Ultimaker is well known for making high quality products and it's great to see them update this old one. So moving right along, we've got Mimaki going full color. They've just released a full color UV LED 3D printer, the 3DUJ2207. Uh, it's considered an entry level color 3D printer with a 200 by 200 by 76 millimeter build volume. It uses UV light to jet through resin uh, with just enough UV to ensure that the ink drop is very round. A small roller then smooths the layer and the process repeats throughout the entire print. Uh, now with ICC profiling built in to ensure accurate colors, it offers over 10 million full color profiles at a resolution of 1200 PPI. This is really applicable for scaled models, prototyping, medical applications or education and figurines, other stuff like that. Starting at 40,000 euros, uh, it's pretty cool. Definitely something to check out. Moving right along, we've got the Titan Robotics releasing their Atlas 3.6, which is their largest pellet extrusion printer to date at 50 by 50 by 72 inches or 1270 by 1270 by 1828 millimeters of build volume. It's capable of printing parts up to six feet tall. So on top of that, it's got an actively heated chamber up to 80 Celsius for high temp composites like CF Ultim. It's also got several extrusion configurations from single pellet, dual pellet, hybrid dual pellet plus filament, hybrid single pellet plus filament, and uh, the whole thing's based on closed loop industrial CNC control systems. Now, I've been able to see these machines in person and they're a great crew over there. It's absolutely a beast of a machine. Really, really incredible. And they're built in Colorado, really cool people. Be sure to go check them out. Next, we've got Optimac releasing their CS250 and the HCTBR, which are two new lens additive manufacturing systems of DED technology, which is directed energy deposition for metal 3D printing. Both machines have a 250 millimeter cubed bill volume, and both systems are also available in three and five axis versions. Now, they also offer a next generation print head featuring the ability to change the laser's size and intensity during the printing. So the CS250 is more of a compact, research-oriented printer with four integrated powder feeders, and the BCTBR is designed for high-volume application. So they can actually get into high-volume production of metals like aluminum and titanium. Next, we've got SLM Solutions releasing the NXG12600 metal printer. So this is SLM's newest large format machine coming with 12 one kilowatt lasers that can operate simultaneously. This means that it's up to 20 times faster than their single laser SLM280 model. So the printer was designed for mass production of large parts with its enhanced size and speed. Uh, and the printer's optical setup is based on a laser scanning system that allows for a large amount of overlap during the printing process. So each layer has a double lens 
zoom functionality, which allows it to use different spot sizes. It's got a 600 millimeter cubed build envelope, and that's freaking huge. Moving right along, we've got software and other additional hardware. We'll start this right out with Interspectral, releasing their AM Explorer, designed specifically for visualizing and working with layer-based metal additive manufacturing. Now, this software is special because it's got the ability to fuse, explore, and analyze design files, simulation data, machine monitoring data, and post-build metrology data from the metal additive manufacturing process. This gives the manufacturers the capability of understanding process data to reduce manufacturing costs, improve quality, and accelerate the application development. Next, we've got the 4D Additive Print Preparation Program getting an update, allowing users to quickly and easily create latticed parts. This allows you to fabricate a range of complex, lightweight objects like implants that are, frankly, very hard to do by hand. Next, we've got Shining 3D Scanners. Basically, they just released a fully automatic desktop 3D inspection scanner with high accuracy for 3D scanning and inspection. They also released an iScan Agent HX handheld color 3D scanners, and uh, they are one of the brands that we do carry. I love using our iScan Pro 2X Plus. It works great for what we need it for, and uh, you can check those out on the website at visionminer.com. Next, we've got Octon and EOS announcing a new operating system for a seamless AM workflow. Basically, this is an AI-driven factory operating system, now integrating EOS' software capabilities. And they're working to create autonomous manufacturing. This is big. And moving right along, we've got materials. I'd like to start out today with the Centium filaments. These guys always do really cool stuff, and they've started with the TPU58DAS, which is an ESD-safe red filament. Now, electrostatic discharge safe and available in a range of colors, this material also has a high impact strength, extreme tear resistance, and abrasion resistance while being suitable for clean room environments and electronic parts. Ascentium has indicated that the material is ideal for space vehicles and satellite components, specifically for no-fly parts, which must be both red and ESD safe. Uh, they developed the material with chemical specialist Crota, and the big thing about this is that you can't really paint parts. It has to be actually red for these particular applications. Now, ESD safe filaments are usually black because of all the carbon inside, so it's really cool to see this come out. Next, they also released a PET carbon fiber with 15% fiber reinforcement, and it's a polyester composite based on the Luvicom 3F resin from Lavos Group. This is capable of standing temperatures higher than 155 Celsius when it's annealed. They also released a 9085 material based on Savix Ultim 9085 resin, and that's one of the things we specialize in here is the high temp, high performance filaments at visionminer.com. If you're interested in that, give us a call or an email. Next, we've got Furman Alloys Almighty 90. The Almighty family is a series of high performance aluminum powders with excellent mechanical properties while being anodizable polishable, and seawater resistant. Now, it's used currently in the SLM and LMD printing processes, and they claim that it increases strength and gives it 25% higher hardness than its predecessor. With tensile strengths of more than 400 MPa and an elongation at break of less than 25%, uh, <laughs> combined with a density of 99%, this is really cool to see. Next, we've got Evonik and HP with a new elastomer. Now, it's a high-performance flexible powder for additive SLS-type processes, and it's based on a thermoplastic amide, a TPA. Now, it's flexible and lightweight, and it's also characterized by super low density, and it has a shore A hardness of 91, so you get a light part, and it's flexible and tough, and it, pretty cool stuff. Next, we've got DSM Ecopax. Now, this is a bio-based 3D printing polymer uh, called Ecopax AM4001GF. It's 42% organic content made from castor plants, and it has excellent thermal and mechanical properties. Specifically designed for creating lightweight automotive parts, it's based in PA410, and they use proprietary technology that allows it to absorb less moisture than classic PA6-66. Next, we got Nexa 3D releasing their all-purpose and casting resins. Working with chemical companies Henkel, Nexa 3D has released their new general-purpose X-Pro410 photopolymer resin, which is based on Henkel's Loctite Pro410 and is optimized for Nexa 3D's NXE400 SLA printer. Described as an affordable, ultra-fast material with high part accuracy and excellent surface finishes, uh, with the NXE400, it can be printed up to 8 liters per hour. 
Now, while it's able to maintain the accuracy within 0.2% and withstand up to 70 Celsius, this is really cool. They've also got their X-Cast resin designed for series production of precision metal investment casting patterns as a faster, toolless alternative to traditional pattern manufacturing, specifically formulated to facilitate dip shell and flask type investment casting. And it, apparently it's got clean burnout, which is very, very important. Next, we've got Tiger Coatings releasing a new flame retardant SLS powder. Uh, they call it Tigitao. 3D set PPP371, <laughs> uh, and it's basically designed for end use functional parts in automotive, electronics, transportation, and aerospace. It's got excellent thermal and mechanical performance, which everybody seems to be doing these days, and it's developed for the Farsoon SLS system, specifically the HT252P. Anyway, stay tuned, and if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button because we're coming out with a lot more videos on each of these topics and a lot more. And we'll be back next week with the community highlight, the news blitz, and all the other stuff we normally do. So definitely hit that like and subscribe. It really helps the YouTube algorithm let us know that you like our content, and it helps it show it to more people. So, you know, all the algorithm stuff going on these days. Just, just hit it. Just hit that button. Anyway, here at Vision Miner, we do high temp, high performance machines, materials, and tools to make it easier for you. And if you don't want to do it, we'll do it for you in our print service. So, give us a call or give us an email. We're out here in Southern California, and we love hearing from you. So, thanks for watching. Have a positive rest of your day, and I'll see you on the next video.